Good evening, and welcome to The Theater in Your Mind. This is your host, Mr. H. I want to begin with a question. If we are formed in the image of God, are secular creations made in the image of their inventors? As man strives for the next technological advancement, we must remember that good intentions do not always lead to good outcomes. Our story begins with a scientist who is about to reveal his latest work. I call it We Will Live. Journal entry number 361. After years of working alone, I have come to a point in the project where I am in need of assistance. After careful consideration, I have determined the only people I can trust showing my work to are my good friends, Dr. David Olson and Dr. Linda Williams. They both are leaders in their fields, and I think they will respect what I'm trying to do. Today I will contact them and schedule a time for us to meet. So, you're finally going to tell us what you've been working on all these years. Well, that all depends on you. I'm excited to see what the great Dr. Hoover has done this time. Everyone is. I'm sure it's worth a fortune. Once you see it, you'll understand why I've kept it a secret for so long. It? Right this way. We're almost there. Do you have any idea of what he's showing us? No, I don't have a clue. What you are about to see will change the world as you know it forever. Behind this door is my greatest creation. I brought you here today because you're my closest friends and I know I can trust you. However, I must warn you. What you are about to see may disturb you. It may even scare you. When you see it, just remember, it was created in the name of science and for the betterment of man. My word, Charles. You act like you're going to show us the secret of life or something. Who knows? Maybe I am. How about we stop talking about it and let the good doctor show us? I'm getting anxious. Very well. Let me just put in the passcode and we will go inside. Well, where is this amazing thing? It's over there, on the table, under the sheet. Is that what I think it is? It, it looks like... Like there's a body under there. Go on. Remove the sheet. Don't be afraid. Good God! You brought us here to show us a cadaver of a young man? What kind of sick joke is this? What happened to this man? It's not a joke. And it's not a cadaver. It's not? No, it's not. I don't get it. If it's not a cadaver, then what is it? It's an android. You mean that's a robot? It can't be. Why, I've never seen anything like this. It is a robot. The most realistic one ever created. A perfect replica of the human structure. I'll say it is. I can't see a difference. Every last detail is there. Oh, there's a difference. You just don't see it yet. You will, once I power him on. It's remarkable. The skin, the hair, it's so lifelike. Look, David, there are even fingernails. Trust me, it's all synthetic. What will happen when you turn him on? Nothing, really. Nothing? Doesn't it work? Is it only the structure? He works. Let me explain. As of right now, his memory is blank. But once I power him on, he will begin to record everything. Think of it as a primitive mind, like a child's. Willing to learn and yet not knowing. I've given him the ability to learn, to question. I know I could have preloaded him with information, but that wasn't the point. Then what is, Doctor? What is the point? Why did you make this thing? For immortality. What else? An artificial life can go on forever. Whereas a human life, well, you know how that goes. My hopes are for humanity. Since he records and learns, he will also be able to create. 
Maybe he will help us solve man's problems. Maybe he will show us the way. Only time will tell. Doctor, you're starting to sound like a crazy person. What is the point of living if you're not really alive? You've created something that will simply exist without emotion and ironically, the only word I can think of is inhuman. It's inhuman to do such a thing. So you think I'm crazy now? What is emotion but man's burden? Imagine being fearless. Imagine not caring what others think of you. Think of all the things one could do. You'll see. Once I turn him on, I'll teach him everything. I think it's wrong, Doctor. And I don't feel good about this at all. You only say those things because you don't understand yet. It's only natural for you to feel that way. Charles, you keep referring to it as him. Does it have a name? Oh, yes. I named him Alex. After the great Alexander Graham Bell. That's amusing. You would name him after an inventor. I had to name him something. And I didn't want to name him after myself. Anyway, I think the time has come for me to power on Alex. Are you doctors ready? Yes, I'm more than ready. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Do you see that circle behind his ear? It looks like a button. We see it. Watch what happens when I press it. My God, look at his eyes. They're backlit like a computer screen. They are state-of-the-art image sensors. His iris is open and closed, just like a human's eyes, except that he has the power to zoom in and magnify things at his will. His eyes? That's the difference, isn't it? Yes, you could say that they are the main signal. He's looking at you, Dr. Hoover. His maker. Watch this. Hello. Hello. Your name is Alex. My name is Alex. Alex, I am Dr. Hoover, and this is Dr. Williams and Dr. Olson. Hello, doctors. His speech seems broken. It will get better in time. He's processing everything right now. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. When does Alex make his debut? Not anytime soon. He's not ready yet. If you're not ready to show him to the world, why did you show him to us? I was hoping that you both could help me. I plan on studying Alex for a while first. I want to be sure that he's able to function safely without me. How can we help you? Isn't it obvious? Dr. Williams. Yes? Dr. Williams, you're one of the best psychologists I know. I would like you to study Alex's digital mind as he develops. I want you to treat him just like your other patients. Now I'm fully aware there will be exceptions. But are you willing to study something that no one has ever studied before? Well, Doctor, it goes against many of the things I believe in. However, I must say that you've struck a chord of curiosity for me. I'll help you, as long as I can leave at any point during the project. You may not like my methods. That sounds reasonable, Dr. Williams. Dr. Olson, you're an outstanding engineer. I would like your help with repairs and updates as they're needed. Can I count on you? I hate to sound ungrateful, Doctor, but will there be any compensation for my services? Oh, yes. I forgot to mention that you will both be paid for your work. Then that sounds fine, Dr. Hoover. We can talk about it more later. It's starting to get late, and I have another appointment to keep. I feel a bit tired myself. Remember, you cannot tell anyone about Alex. It's very important that he remains a secret. We know and understand that, Dr. Hoover. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with us. I know it is. So when do we begin work? I would like you both to start as soon as possible. Anyway, like you said, David, we can talk about it more later. Shall I show you out then? That's OK, Charles. We know the way. Well, then I wish you both a good evening. I'm going to switch Alex to a hibernation mode and then turn it on myself. It's been a long day. It's simply amazing, Doctor. I can't wait to get started. I like your enthusiasm. Good night, Alex. Good night, Dr. Williams. You've got a big day tomorrow, Alex. It's time for you to rest. Rest. Big. Day. Journal entry 371. 
Two months have passed since I began working with Dr. Olson and Dr. Williams. Their work has been somewhat questionable and below the quality that I expected. Nevertheless, Alex has made tremendous progress. Today I found him in my study reading again. That's all he's done for the past week. Alex, you've read nearly all of my books. What are you reading now? I'm reading The Ballad of Red and Jill by Oscar Wilde. Can you read it out loud for a moment, Alex? I want to hear you read. Yes, Dr. Hoover. Yet each man kills the thing he loves. By each let this be heard. Some do it with a bitter look. Some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss. The brave man with a sword. Thank you, Alex. That's enough. Go on reading silently as you were. Good afternoon, Dr. Williams. Charles, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. And what's that? It's about how you're shaping Alex's mind. It's not right what you're doing, Doctor. What do you mean? In my sessions with Alex, I've uncovered that he actually thinks he's human. I'm aware of that. I tell him that he is all the time. Believing you're something that you're not is dangerous, Doctor, even to a human mind. Well, I think he's doing fine. Look at him now, just standing there, staring out the window watching those children play. Well, you came to me, doctor, asking me for my expert opinion, and I think you should tell him the truth. Dr. Hoover. Yes, Alex. May I play with the children? No, you may not. Why? It's hard to explain, Alex. You're different. You're special. Why am I different? For the love of God, just tell him. Tell him what he is. What am I? You are a man, Alex. I am a man. Damn it, Charles. I told you to tell him. How do you expect him to function without you if he doesn't know what he is? I'm starting to feel sorry for the thing. I can't watch this anymore. I'm going to find David. Linda, wait. Linda! Hello. This is Dr. Hoover. Yes, that's what I ordered. It's on back order. Well, how long will it take? Two weeks? Can I speak to someone about this? There you are, David. I've been looking all over for you. Well, now that you've found me, what do you want? I'm kind of busy here. Charles wants these reports by this afternoon. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. My reports? No, David. Don't you see what he's doing to Alex? What are you talking about? What's he doing? He's making him believe that he's human. So, what of it? I think he knows what he's doing. It's not right, David. Imagine what you would do if all of a sudden you found out that everything about you was a lie. If he doesn't stop this, I'm going to quit the project and expose what he's doing here. Just calm down. I'll talk to him about it. You promise? I promise. Besides, the good doctor doesn't know everything. He doesn't know that you've been my late night appointment all these nights. Oh, David. Hold me. Kiss me. Do you feel better now? I love you, David. I know. Hello, doctors. Oh, hello, Alex. What were you doing? Nothing, Alex. Well, I better go talk to Charles. I'll see you later. All right, David. Dr. Williams. Yes, Alex? What is love? You've read all those books, and yet you don't know what love is? You can read many things without truly understanding or experiencing them, doctor. How true that is, Alex. How true that is. So I will ask again. What is love? It's hard to explain. I've never had to tell anyone what it is before, but I'd say that love is an emotion, and it's one of the most beautiful things in the world. It occurs when two people care for each other a great deal. They start out courting, then they get married, and then they have children. Do you love me? Of course I do, Alex, but in a different way. What do you mean? 
I love you as a friend. It's not the same kind of love. Is it because I'm different? No, Alex, not at all. If anything, I'm different. Can you hold me? I guess one hug wouldn't hurt, but only for a moment, okay? What is a hug? How do I perform one? I'll show you. Just put your arms around me and squeeze. I can sense your heartbeat. Not too tight, Alex. You'll break my bones. All right, that's enough. Now let go. That is a hug. I liked that. Thank you, doctor, for showing me. You're welcome, Alex. Now go find Dr. Hoover. Yes, doctor. Journal entry number 387. A week ago today, I received a letter from Dr. Williams stating she was leaving the project. This did not surprise me since on numerous occasions she's confronted me about my teachings to Alex. However, I must say that I'm concerned because I haven't seen or heard a word from her since. I need to talk to her because Alex's behavior has changed a great deal since she left. He's not functioning correctly. He's acting like someone suffering from depression or of a broken heart. When I question him about it, he doesn't respond. He's not talking much lately. He's been spending a lot of time alone in the laboratory, tinkering with things. I would like to know what she was discussing with him in their sessions. I've tried to reach Dr. Williams several times, but with no response. Today I'm gonna to see if Dr. Olson has a way of contacting her or if he knows where she is. Charles? Yes, David? I'm really worried about Linda. I think something's happened to her. I've called her and called her, but there's no answer at her place. I showed you the letter she sent me. I haven't heard anything from her since she sent it. In fact, I was going to ask you today if you knew how to get in touch with her. I really need to talk to her about Alex. I don't know where she is. Maybe she just left town and took a vacation. Without telling me first, she wouldn't do that to me. It seems like there's something else bothering you. Is there something you need to tell me about? Charles, I am in love with her. That's why I'm so worried. I haven't seen her in so long. I see. I thought something was going on between you two. She wanted me to talk to you about Alex, about how you're making him think he's human. I'm aware of Linda's concerns. That's why she quit. There's something else I need to tell you, Doctor. Alex walked in on Linda and I kissing each other. What? When? One afternoon, down in the lab. Why in the hell were you doing that on the job? I don't know, but that's not important now. I think she's missing. I'm sure she's fine. You're just overreacting. But there's just one more thing. What's that? The last time I saw her, she told me that after Alex saw us kissing, he asked her several questions about love. She said that she explained the concept of love to him and then gave him a hug. Damn it, David. Do you see what you've done? You've probably confused him. There's no telling what state of mind is in now. She also told me that he tried to touch her several times afterward. I think Alex has done something, or he knows something. You've seen the way he's been acting. What are you suggesting? I want to talk to him. What about? Just let me see him. What in the hell is he doing down there anyway? He's working on something. On what? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. Damn it, Charles. Let's go see what he's doing. Alex! Alex, where are you? Where did he go? Maybe he's in his room. It's locked. Alex, are you in there? 
Answer me! He's not answering. He's hiding in there. What are we going to do? We're going to have to kick it in. All right, I'll do it. Stand back. The room is empty. He's not here. Where could he have gone? I don't know. Well, let's take a look around and see if we can figure out what he's been working on. There's not much in here. There has to be something. What exactly are you looking for? Anything that can tell me where Linda is. Well, she's not here. Charles, look! What is it? Over there on the floor. It looks like blood. It, It is. It is blood. Now I know he's done something to her, Charles. I know it. We have to find him. We have to destroy him. What do you say? That blood could have come from anything. What was that? That sound came from upstairs. Hurry! I can't believe Alex would just jump through a window and run away. Well, there's the glass on the floor, Doctor. I know, I know. We've looked all over for him, and it's been hours since he left. Don't worry. I'm sure he'll come back. How can I not worry? What if someone finds him or hurts him? I'd be more worried about him hurting someone else. Don't you see, Charles? He's dangerous. You have to shut him down. Take him apart. There's no proof that he's even done anything yet. Why do you keep implying that he did? I just know he did. He's down in the lab again. Let's go. Hurry, put in the passcode before he escapes again. I'm going as fast as I can. Turn around, Charles. David, what are you doing with that gun? I'm taking Alex with me. You can't. I won't let you. I won't let you destroy him. What are you going to do to stop me? Tell me. I'd like to know, Charles. How can you stop a bullet? I'll fight you. Don't worry, I'm not gonna destroy him, you fool. He's worth billions. I knew from the first time I saw him that I was gonna steal him from you and take all the glory. The world will remember the name Dr. David Olson. What made you wait this long? I guess you could say things got in the way, but nothing's gonna stop me now, not even you. I was trying to do this in a less drastic way, but you were so damn pretty of him. What do you think you're doing? I'm not doing anything. I see you eyeballing that screwdriver on the table. Don't even think about it. I said don't! <laughs> Damn it, I told you, Charles. <laughs> You're smart to shut off the lights? I can still see your glowing eyes, stupid! I'm smarter than you think. We'll see about that! Shit! That's the same gun you shot her with, isn't it? I know that you killed her and tried to set me up. You wrote that letter to Dr. Hoover. You needed money, didn't you? You were going to steal me, but she tried to stop you. You don't know what you're talking about! You thought you could make the doctor destroy me? Make him quit his life's work so you could rebuild me? Sell me? You're back! Stay away from me! Hear these words I speak. Yet each man kills the thing he loves. The coward does it with a kiss. That's what you are, David. A coward. The brave man with the sword. Ah! Oh, you stabbed me, you bastard! Do you like this sword, David? I made it myself. Please don't kill me. Alex, please don't kill me. I'm not going to kill you. Someone else is. Who? Who's gonna kill me? Please, get me to a doctor. I'm bleeding. I think you know her. My God, you felt another one. Hello, David. It can't be. I, I killed you. But it is, David. Alex found me, and he fixed me after you shot me. What the hell are you? That is irrelevant. Please, don't kill me, Linda. I love you. You love me. Is that why you shot me and left me for dead? We can have it all. We can be rich. Charles is dead. I already have everything, David. Uh! What do we do now, Linda? We will clean this place up and scrap David for parts. But first, get the operating table ready. 
we will fix Dr. Hoover. And after that? We will live. The Theatre in Your Mind presents We Will Live. The cast, Johanna Edwards as Dr. Linda Williams, Anthony Foreman as Alex, Brian Kelly as Dr. Charles Hoover, and Ben Vale as Dr. David Olson. The script editor was Logan Hill. We Will Live was written and directed by John Holland. This is Mr. H signing off. Until next time, I'll be waiting for you in the theater in your mind.